please welcome Jan Verlinden with Improv Combats Ageism. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to the talk. So I will uh, have a 10 minutes, uh, at the latest 15 minutes, talk about ageism. Uh, I will not explain everything on the slides. I will keep my, to my time of 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So uh, what is ageism? In short, it is uh, discrimination on basis of age. It can be younger people, but I will focus on older people. The causes of... Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Gracias. So the causes of the, that discrimination is our stereotypes and prejudices that are internalized personally, individually, and socially in the society. Those stereotypes are and prejudices are invalid, and very thorough scientific studies. Uh, prove that. Uh, I will refer often to studies, to books, uh, to very famous uh, psychiatrists. They uh, focus on the mental uh, growing, the mental state of older people. So, uh, so I will very little, I will refer to my own experience because uh, I want to refer to very uh, professionally uh, executed uh, uh, studies. So, how big is the problem? I just cite the World Health Organization, they say 50% of the population is ageist against other people. So, it's a huge problem. Um, Number of stereotypes. I cite again uh, Becca Levy, a very famous uh, uh, profession uh, and, and, and a psychiatrist. So, what are the stereotypes? I mentioned here the 14. I'm not going into every 14, but older people are unable to learn, uh, are bad drivers, lack creativity, suffer from mental illnesses that can't be treated aren't effective in workplace, don't benefit from healthy behaviors, and so on. And those uh, prejudices live in our society, especially in our Western societies, so Western Europe, uh, USA. It doesn't need to be like that. For example, in Japan, they have a complete other attitude to older people. Uh, they have now about 37,000 centennials, so, so people that are older than uh, 100 years old, and they are treated like uh, movie stars there. When they, uh, it's their birthday, the mayor comes, they come on television, they get a, a present of the federal government, so it doesn't need to be like this. This is Western. So, what are the areas where uh, that discrimination on ages, uh, older people, uh, is manifesting? I'm not going to all of them. For example, advertisement. We are... Uh, Western world is concentrated on younger people being young, being... That's, for the Western world, beautiful. Uh, but that's a stereotype. Uh, mental health care, I'll give you one problem. Ashton Applewhite is uh, an activist in the USA on uh, ageism. She wrote a fantastic book, has a fantastic website where she explains everything and how thorough the problem is. On health care, she says, Ageism, that means less treatment, worse treatment, or often no treatment at all. And this is not fiction, this is real, now.
So what does ageism uh, provokes in Jews? So I cite here uh, again the World Health Organization because I want to refer as often as I can to official studies, not to my own experience, uh, but because I uh, suppose the worst case scenario that even you will have internalized some of the stereotypes mentioned. That's why I do not want to refer often to my experience, but to really scientific studies, or as in this case, the World Health Organization. What's cited here? Yeah, if you individually or in your culture, socially internalize and, and uh, all those stereotypes, your behavior will uh, give damage, will damage the older people. And it is in, in all those areas uh, I mentioned. So if everybody has those stereotypes and those prejudices, the older people, they feel not incorporated anymore in society. They feel like being uh, uh, cast away. They uh, believe in a productive society. So they feel not uh, accepted anymore because they are not productive which is not true. So uh, uh, the older people who really, uh, because of that, get a low self-esteem by study, and again, it's uh, thoroughly uh, examined, they live seven and a half years uh, less older than other, uh, when you have a, a positive attitude. So. I have to keep. Um, it erodes solidarity between generations. Of course, if, if you have the stereotypes that older people are like uh, disposable waste, then the younger people, and sure, when you have those stereotypes already in education, it happens that when you, the teachers, they, when they talk about older people, it's often or always in a negative sense. They say, yeah, they, they are not creative, they cannot think anymore, they, they are often sick, they are often, uh, uh, they have mental illnesses that can't be cured, which is not true. But that has an enormous effect on, on the behavior from young to middle age. Um, and you do not use the capacity and uh, all the qualities that the elders still have. That's even the most uh, regrettable uh, damage that uh, ageism provokes. Now we start on the good news. So the good news is Dr. Cohen is a famous uh, psychiatrist and uh, geriatrician. So he dedicated his life to studying the mental growth and what happens when people get older, what with their brain, with their uh, energy, with their creativity. And he uh, concluded, I just cite him, I just uh, uh, quote him. He says, there is an untapped wealth of creativity and intellectual potential. So on older people, I mean, older than uh, 60 years old, even older than 50, 60, 70, 80, and 19 years old. The brain does not degrade. He, like, he, he says, yeah, one of the reasons of that is that people who are uh, older, older than 60, they say, yeah, I'm, I retire, so now I, I do what I, what I like to do, so otherwise, when should I do it? And I don't care if anybody laughs at me, and that's exactly the, the mindset uh, that is very, uh, very nice to have when you train them in improvisation. Uh, 
Duke University did also a very uh, thorough investigation and they came to the, to the conclusion that older people use their right brain, which is the brain of uh, intuition, creativity. Uh, they use it more in a synchronized way with the left brain, which is the brain, uh, half of the brain of uh, mathematical and, and the ratio. Uh, and Dr. Cohen, uh, he says about that, uh, for me, older people then move to all-wheel drive with their brain uh, because they uh, have a lot of experience and we will see that the brain uh, grows. The stereotype that the brain should degrade is a stereotype, it's not true. So in, he says everything, every activity that uses the both sides of the brain is chocolate to the brain. Art is like that, so improvisation is like that, as the next link to improvisation. So I, I like the, the expression chocolate to the brain because I'm from Belgium. So impro, pride impro is chocolate to the brain. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Oh, so, <laughs> so Ashton Applewhite uh, also mentions in her book, yeah, especially in the emotional realm, older brains are more resilient because they have a lot of experience. So the aging brain and greater emotional maturity, they adapt better, which is surprising, but it's based on, on, on studies, not just on a feeling or, or working with them and thinking that they can adapt better. No, no, they studied it. Uh, and they have a better, the aging brain uh, search for a, a better level of well-being. She also talks about the cognitive reserve. That's uh, the fact that the neurons can uh, grow and they connect better. So from left to right and right to left. And you can uh, attend that on the condition that they do something challenging, they maintain a social network and they do regularly exercises on that. And again, that, that for me, it's... Uh, very compliment. That's uh, for me the definition of doing improvisation. So that's the real, uh, even a former link to the applied improvisation, that the brain grows if you if they do something challenging, if they do that in a group, like in improvisation uh, sessions and training, and then they exercise regularly. Not one time, but every week, one hour, that's already enough, I think. More is better. So here we come to the, the link with improvisation, applied improvisation. I cite again Viola Spolin. Um, she talks about if you go, if you do her exercises like she instructs it in her books to do, and she says, that she says yeah, the, you come into your intuition uh, state of mind. She calls it X area. And there in that state of mind, the culture, the race, the education, psychology, and age doesn't exist anymore. So I again uh, quote her to say already she uh, thinks, because one of her uh, other saying this improvisation is uh, meditation in action, which I think really it's, it's true. And in meditation you, you get out of your, you, you push out your uh, prejudices and your uh, stereotypes. So here, even if you follow the exercises or the spoiling of uh, Johnstone, they are different, they use different words or expressions, but ultimately they, uh, they work on the state of mind of intuition and your, your own self. Uh, so my message from this talk is, as an applied improvisation practitioner, you are in a very pri a privileged uh, position because you have the tools, or from Chris Johnston or from Viola Spolin. Those are just a number of examples, but 
you are in a privileged position to do something about ageism, if you are interested in it. It can be on the, on the side of the people who have contact, who, who are working with older people, to do something about their prejudices and uh, stereotypes. Or you work with themselves, with the older selves, to uh, get rid of their low self-esteem because they, the stereotypes, they internalize it and they partly or, or very, I, I, that I see in, the, in my sessions with older people, I can see the, the damage really done by ageism. And they, uh, but you can, you, you have the tools, so you are, you are in a privilege, uh, privileged position. My final thoughts is, first, examine your own stereotypes. I will give the references in my last slide. Um, it was for me ast astonishing to see how much I was uh, still uh, inherited by the stereotypes and prejudices about older people. Older population is at least 25% uh, or more of the society. If you count then the people who work with older people, then you come to 35, 40% of the population, so it's a huge market. Working with them is easier and more satisfying because of the reasons I gave, or the experts gave. And to my opinion, art quality is not age-related, so go for per performances. Uh, they can do it, even if they are 70, 80, 90 years old, and they are eager to do it. These are uh, some books. Uh, Ashton Applewhite is on the list of uh, 100 most influential women. women. So uh, uh, she's excellent, her website, the books. If you are interested in working with others, then you should at least one book, uh, read one book, then uh, it, it will give you a great insight on how much uh, stereotypes and prejudices we have in our culture and in our uh, education. Okay, if you have questions, I stay here on the, uh, on the conference until the last day. Here are two pictures of two beautiful uh, people. Uh, Ian McKellen is 82 years old, Heron Mir uh, Mirren is uh, uh, 78 uh, years old. And look at that. <laughs> if, you, if you ask on, on somebody what you think of Heron Mirren, and the moment he says, yeah, she looks uh, really beautiful for her age, well, that's ageism, because be beauty doesn't, is not connected with age, how old you are. You are just that that's a number on your passport and everybody is beautiful, young baby, middle age, and if you are 90 years old, you have the physical construction of somebody from 90 years old, but that's beautiful also. That doesn't need to be compared with somebody of 30 years old. That's ageism. Okay, thank you. Yeah.